Hey, what's going on everybody? In today's video, we're going to create a temperature conversion program using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, let's begin everybody. We will begin within our HTML file. Make sure you've linked a script to your JavaScript file, which we'll fill in later. So within the body of our document, we will create a form element. Within our form, we will create an H1 heading for the title of this program, which we will name temperature conversion is good. After our H1 element, we'll create an input element. This is a self-closing tag. It's a text box. Since we're going to be converting temperatures, I will set the type to be number. So that should give us some arrows to increase or decrease the number, or type one in if we need to. I'm going to give this text box an ID of text box. We'll be referring to this text box by its ID later. I'm also going to go ahead and set an initial value of zero. Then we can increase or decrease the number, like I said before. It is a little small, but with CSS, we will increase the size. What I'm going to do now is create two radio buttons, along with labels. So we have input. Input is a self-closing tag. The type will be radio. And for the ID, this will be a radio button to convert to Fahrenheit. I can never spell Fahrenheit. We'll want the radio buttons in the same group. I will set the name of the group to be unit. Oh, looks like I misspelled type. There we go. So I'm going to place our radio button on a new line. So within our first input element, I will add a line break. All right. So after our first radio button, I'll create a label for it. Label. This label will be for two Fahrenheit. And the text will be Celsius to Fahrenheit. Or if you prefer, you could create like an arrow. I don't really like the look of that. Let me use an emoji instead. So on Windows, to create an emoji, you can hold Windows and semicolon. Is there an arrow? That'll work. So when you click on the label, you should also be able to select the radio button. That's because the for attribute is the same as the ID attribute of the radio button. Okay, let's copy both the first radio button and the label, then paste it, but change Fahrenheit to Celsius. Let's switch these around. Fahrenheit to Celsius. To Celsius. I'm also going to add a line break after our first label. So right here. As well as here. Google wants to translate my web page from German to English. It's probably because of the word Fahrenheit, I'm guessing. Now I'll create a button. The type will be button. The text will be submit. There is an on click attribute for buttons. On click. When we click on this button, we can execute a JavaScript function. Eventually, we'll be creating a function named convert. Actually, let's take care of that now before we forget. So within our JavaScript file, function convert. We'll fill this in later. So when we click on the button, we will execute the convert function. Then lastly, we're going to display a result, whatever the new temperature is. We'll use a paragraph element. The ID will be result. And just as a placeholder for now, I'm going to type select a unit. All right, so far so good. Let's style this program with CSS now. Be sure to save your HTML file. We'll move on to CSS. We will first change the body of our document. Let's change the font family of the body of our document. I'll pick Arial with a backup of sans serif. I'll change the background color too. Background dash color. I like using HSL values. Let's type a color such as black. We will change the color to be HSL. I'll go with a very light gray color, like 95%. So the background is going to be slightly light gray. 
We'll fill in the form section to be pure white. We will select our H1 element. That's going to be the header. I'll pick a color. Again, I'll be using HSL values. Let's go with, I don't know, blue. Feel free to pick a different color if you would like. That's not bad. Then we'll fill in the form. Our form contains pretty much all of these elements. So let's select our form. I will change the background color. I'll just copy this line and paste it. But I'll make this pure white. I'll text align center everything within this form. So everything should be centered. I'll set a max width of the form because right now it's taking up 100% of the width of the web browser. So max width will be, how about 350 pixels? We would like this form to be within the middle aligned horizontally. We can set margin to be auto to automatically center that. I'll add a little bit of padding around the elements within our form. Padding. Let's do 25 pixels. I'll smooth the corners of the form using border radius. Border radius. 10 pixels. Then I'll add a box shadow. Box shadow. The first value is the horizontal offset. Let's set that to be 5 pixels. Then the vertical offset, I will set that to be 5 pixels. The third value is the blur radius, because right now it's fairly concentrated. Let's stick with 15 pixels. Not bad. You can also select a color. Again, I'm going to use HSL values. You can also change the transparency. I'll set mine to be 30%, or approximately 30%. 0 0.3. Not bad. So that's my box shadow. Now we're going to change the text box. So this text box does have an ID. Text box. Let's select this element by its ID. I'll set the width to be 50%. It's going to take up 50% of the width available. Let's text align center. The number is going to be right in the middle. Let's change the font size. Let's do 2EM for 200%. I'll add a border. 2 pixel solid. Then I'll pick some HSL values for the color. I'll make it a little transparent. Maybe like 80%. Let's select a border radius. 4 pixels to smooth the corners. I'll add a little bit of margin below the text box. Margin dash bottom. 15 pixels is good. That's going to push the radio buttons down further, just to give this text box more space. Let's work on the radio buttons next. So we are selecting the labels. So let's take every label. I'll change the font size so it's a little bigger. 1.5 EM for 150%. I'll make the font weight bold, just to bold it. There. Let's select our button. We are selecting our button. I'll add a little bit of margin above the button. Margin dash top, 15 pixels. Let's change the background color of the button. Pick a color. I'll pick red. And again, I'm going to use HSL values because I like them. Ah, that's decent. I'll change the font size of the button, 1.5 EM for 150%. I'll remove the border, border none. I'll add some padding. 10 pixels for the top and bottom of the button, 15 for the sides. I'll round the corners with border radius. Border radius, 5 pixels. I'm going to change the font color. Color, white. Then when I hover my cursor over the button, I will change the cursor to be a pointer. And that appears to work now. So when I hover over the button, I'll use the hover pseudo class to change the background color of the button. We are selecting our button. 
then select the Hover Pseudo class. We'll make the background color just a little bit darker. We'll change the lightness of our HSL value to be like 10% darker. So I have 60%, I'll change that to be 50. So now the background should change when I hover over the button. Lastly, let's change the CSS properties of the result. So this should have an ID of result. Result. I'll make the font size a little bit bigger. Font size 1.75 EM is good. And I'll make the font weight bold. Font weight bold. All right, and that is all the CSS we need. Be sure to save everything. And then we will move on to our JavaScript file. All right, so what I like to do is at the top of my JavaScript program, I will declare all of the constants and variables that I'll need. So let's get our text box. I'll set this to be a constant. Const text box equals document dot get element by ID. The ID that we're selecting is our text box. We'll need the two Fahrenheit radio button. Let's copy this line, paste it. Get the ID of two Fahrenheit. Const two Fahrenheit get element by ID, two Fahrenheit, then two Celsius, two Celsius, const two Celsius, the ID is two Celsius. So that will be this radio button. Copy this line, paste it. Then we need the result to display the result. Result, get element by ID, result. Within our HTML file, we don't necessarily need to select a unit anymore. We'll add that later if somebody presses submit without selecting a radio button. Then we need let temp for the temperature. When we click on the submit button, we will execute this function, convert. So what are we going to do within this function? We'll begin with an if statement. We'll check to see if our two Fahrenheit radio button is selected. So take two Fahrenheit, we'll use the checked property. If this radio button is checked, it's going to return true. If it's not, it's going to be false. Else if two Celsius is checked, two Celsius dot checked, we'll perform some different actions. Else, let's change the content of our result. So here result dot text content equals select a unit let's see if this works be sure to save everything i am not going to select a radio button i'm just going to submit and that's correct select a unit we didn't select one let's be sure that these two radio buttons are working just temporarily i'm going to change the result within the if and else if statement you selected to Fahrenheit and you selected two Celsius. I just want to be sure that these radio buttons are working. So let's convert to Fahrenheit, submit, you selected two Fahrenheit. We'll select the second radio button, you selected two Celsius. Okay, we know that this program is reading these radio buttons successfully. So we no longer need these two lines of code. We're going to get the number from our text box. We'll store that within temp. Temp for temperature. Temp equals take our text box, access the value within. So when we accept user input, it's of the string data type. I'm going to typecast the value as a number so we can use it with math. Okay, then we're gonna take our temperature and convert it to Fahrenheit. Here's the formula. Temp equals temp times 9 divided by 5 plus 32. Then we're going to update the text content of the result. Result.textContent equals our temperature. Then I'm going to add plus Fahrenheit. So to add the degree symbol on Windows, you can hold Alt, then type 0176 on the numpad. So this will be Fahrenheit. Let's type 100 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit, 
That gives us 212 degrees Fahrenheit. 10 would be 50. 1 degree Celsius would be 33.8. 0 is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. If you would like to add some precision following our temperature, there's a built-in method. 2 fixed. We'll add one point of precision. This will give us one digit past the decimal place. Zero degrees Celsius converted to Fahrenheit is 32.0 degrees Fahrenheit. 10 degrees Celsius is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's copy these three lines, then paste them within the else if statement. We'll keep this line the same, but we'll change the formula. Temp equals, within parentheses, temp minus 32 times 5 divided by 9. Then change Fahrenheit to Celsius. So what is 32 degrees Fahrenheit converted to Celsius? That is 0. 100 is 37.8. Alright everybody, so that is a simple temperature conversion program using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS.